This should be physics coming up here, 27D Blake in this video. And on the last one, I should have maybe stuck a couple more problems on there because this is the last one was about any elastic collisions. No, my math was right. This is 4.3 meters per second to the north. The book's math was wrong. So I had that corrected already. We finished up with number five. And there's a 6F problems on page 226, which are still inelastic collisions. Okay, so kinetic energy, like in the uh, Newton's cradle, is conserved in perfectly elastic collisions, and so is momentum. But momentum is always conserved in all collisions. So what happens to that other energy? Well, in an inelastic collision, like the one we did with the bubble gum in the lab, momentum is conserved. Uh, mechanical kinetic energy is not. It's con converted into thermal energy. But we can still use momentum equation. Conservation momentum equation works no matter what kind of collision we've got. Powerful equation. So finishing up a couple inelastic collision questions on page 226. A quarter kilogram arrow with a velocity of 12 meters per second to the west strikes a target, 6.8 kilograms. What is the final velocity of the combined mass? Well, it's quarter kilogram times 12 meters per second, so it should be three divided by 7.05, 0.43 meters per second. Notice how I've combined my masses. I have a 6.8 kilogram plus a quarter. It comes out to be 7.05 kilogram. It's both masses combined. Remember the velocities are together on an inelastic collision. It's the same thing. During practice, again, inelastic collision kicks a soccer ball into a bucket. Then they travel together. What's the final velocity of the combined mass? Oh, um, we forgot something. I forgot something on number one B. What is the decrease in kinetic energy during the collision? That's what we're studying here. Well, before you had MV, one half 0.25 kilograms. I forgot my unit. 12 meters per second, that's 144 cut in half, cut into a quarter, comes out to be 100, or 18 joules. Afterwards, if you calculate a greater mass of 7.05 kilograms, but a slower velocity, 0.43 meters per second, and that squared, you're down to 0.65, you're down to uh, 0.65 joules. And when you subtract these off, you've lost about 17 joules. Okay, so number two. Probably about how much energy we lost again. So the ball goes into a bucket. So you got a 0.4 kilogram ball going at eight and a half meters per second. But bucket has no momentum to start with, no velocity. When they get combined, the bucket must be 0.15 kilograms because the ball and the bucket together is 0.55 kilograms. We get a new velocity for both of them together, moving in 6.2 meters per second. Now let's look at their energies. Before, you had half of 0.4 kilograms times 8.5 meters per second, the square of the velocity, is 14.45 joules. After it's heavier and slower, and we're down to 6.2 meters per second, and you square that and multiply by 0.55 and take half of that, you end up with 10.57 joules, which is less. So you have lost about 3.9 joules has been converted into thermal energy. Number three, you got an ice skater to the north and another ice skater going the opposite direction much faster. They combine. What is the final velocity of the two skaters? This is basically my 
um, inelastic collision from the video. You've got a mass going four meters per second one direction, a bigger mass going a faster speed the other direction. Combined mass is going to go the direction of the bigger, heavier, faster mass. And that comes out to be negative 4.6 meters per second for the combined mass. Then it probably asks about kinetic energy. What is the decrease in kinetic energy during the collision? Okay, so what you have to do is you figure the kinetic energy of this one, and then it's no longer a vector. It's an energy. And the kinetic energy of this one's one half mv squared. Both combined, was 5,128 joules. Once the masses are together, going at a slower velocity, this kinetic energy, one half combined mass times V squared, is 1,280 joules, and we must have lost 3,900 joules of energy. Probably done in the form of not like this, two skaters colliding, but with their muscles grabbing one another and slowing down and holding on, and so they did work that way work was done to them also. And 3,900 joules of energy were converted from mechanical energy into thermal energy. Okay, now the book goes into elastic collisions. Okay, elastic collision lab. Let's use the data in the video Elastic 2 to study the conservation of momentum in an elastic collision. We are going to predict the final velocity of an incident mass and compare it to an experimental final velocity. So let me pull this video up. That's in elastic two. We want elastic two. So what we want is we can determine this momentum, and we can determine this momentum, and after they collide, we'll know this momentum, and we want to find this velocity from its momentum. Okay, so what we're looking for is this velocity, the incident velocity final. Okay, so backing up here. Okay, this is on the way to the collision starting. Uh, all right, so the masses are a little less than they were in the last lab because I took those straws off. But the incident mass coming in from the left is 0.1799 kilogram. The target mass coming from the right is 0 0.1808 kilograms are going to collide. The incident cart coming in traverses 0.3 meters in 1.1 seconds. So let's see if we can take, well, let me skip to the next one because the target one is in the frame quicker. The target one goes negative 0.3 meters in about 2.2 seconds. 2.2 and 1.1. Okay, so to go from, let's say, there to there should be about 2.2 seconds. Gotta go fast, farther. You gotta read the numbers. Stop it, read it, stop it, read it. Okay, here goes this one. So if I wrote down the time here and here and subtracted them, I'd get my velocities. Boom, nice little crunch there. And then the time from there to there, and the time from there to there. And they come out to be 
if you stop and read everything and subtract, this is your measured data. I encourage you to go in there and read the screen for yourself. What we are looking for is after the collision, the instant goes to the left 0.3 meters and it takes five seconds to go from one tape mark to the next. And the target one, after the collision went that way, and it goes 0.3 meters in one and a half seconds. Now, I made this look easy, but it's actually hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of work to get to here. Going to the next page, this is our velocities then. You take 0.3 divided by whatever the time is, 0.3 divided by whatever the time is, negative 0.3, 0.3 divided by whatever the time is, and 0.3 negative divided by whatever the time is, you get those. So that's your derived data. So this is how we found it. The incident cart was going in, it went 0.3 meters in 1.1 seconds, came out to 0.27 meters per second. The target cart went negative 0.3 meters in 2.2 seconds. So its velocity was negative 0.13 meters per second. The target cart after the collision went that way and went 0.3 meters in a second and a half. So it moved at 0.2 meters per second. So we are going to determine, hey, what should the velocity of this other one, the incident, be bouncing back? Well, you use your momentum equation. Momentum plus momentum equals momentum plus momentum. So I have 1.799 kilograms <coughs> going at 0.27 meters per second in. I have 1.808 kilograms going at negative 1.3 meters per second to the left. After the collision, I have my 1.1799 kilograms going to the left at an unknown velocity. And I have my 1.808 kilograms going to the right at 0.2 meters per second. When we do that math, it comes out to be negative 0 0.062 meters per second is what we predict is the velocity going back and when you take negative 0.3 and divide by 5 you get negative 0.06 meters per second, which is what we were after. <coughs> okay, we won't do a percent error on that one because it, it's just really goofy the way that works. Okay, let me see how much time we've got left. That's an elastic collision. All right, well, let's do one or two more problems here. So, um, on to page 229, elastic collisions from practice 6G. Let's apply the equation to a perfectly elastic collision in one dimension. Same equation. A 0 0.015 kilogram marble moving to the right at 0.22 meters per second. 0.225 meters per second. Makes a collision with a 0 0.015 kilogram marble moving to the left at 0.18 meters per second. After the collision, the first marble, this one, moves to the left at 0.18 meters per second. The marbles are the same mass so this other one must be 2.225 meters per second to the right. Because this term's canceled. Well, 
0.225 meters per second. That's when the masses are the same. This is very predictable when the masses are the same. It's not as predictable when they're different. A 16 kilogram canoe moving to the left at 12 meters per second. That's hardly possible. Makes a head-on collision with a raft. That's faster than you can run. I don't see canoes go that fast. Four kilogram raft moving to the right at six meters per second. After the collision, the raft moves to the left at 22 meters, 0.7 meters per second. So the raft must be a great deal lighter. Oh, I want to show you something there, by the way. Back on number one, if that collision was perfectly elastic, oh, it says, I forgot. Verify your answer by calculating the total energy before and after. Again, your negatives, that's a square. Your energy doesn't, isn't a vector, at least in this case. So if I take the kinetic energy one-half mv squared of the first one, one-half mv squared of the second one, I get 6.2 times 10 to the minus fourth. If I have the same numbers transposed, I get 6.2 times 10 to the minus fourth joules on the right side also for the marbles. Back to number two, rafts and canoes. Okay, so we have a perfectly elastic collision with conservation of momentum. Um, all right, this was apparently got to something to do with my videos, where if you go to do the right side and you know the masses, but you don't know either one of those velocities, then you have two unknowns. In order to have two unknowns, you have to have the second equation with the same two unknowns. And if you have two equations, two unknowns, and you do all that convoluted math that I did in the video, you can end up with these two equations here, which are used when one of the objects is sitting still and you strike it with the other one. Okay. So, if you go to do a collision and they have a perfect coefficient of restitution, the difference in velocity as they approach one another is the same as the difference in velocity when they go away. There's no loss of energy. Okay. I think I'm going to end here because I got past that lab, and it, which means we just flew through the lab. So I've got a little more work to do on the um, page 229 and 6G. I don't have the canoe and raft problem done. So apparently I thought this was as far as we were going to get. So that's it probably for the week.